this lecture, the pertinence of the black female experience is recollection and distribution. I wanted to start out, and I know there are men here, um, but I want to speak specifically about the black female experience, being a black female, uh, and how important I think it is to the uh, progression of our society. There's something I call post-slavery residue. Some people call it uh, post-traumatic slavery disorder, yada, yada, yada. But what it says to me is that black people as a whole have always been, most of us are, I should say, descendants of slaves, or definitely the product of colonization. We are not where we started, and I think that's pretty obvious. During this time, slave trade, colonization, but especially during slave trade, women were valued only for their labor and for their sex and the offspring that they could bring to the slave trade. Female bodies were always exploited and their lives were devalued. Much hasn't changed in 2015. I feel like during that time, starts this culture of shame, where black women and black people in general, I believe, were taught to be ashamed of themselves. They were taught not to share their stories. They were taught to not use their language, to not use their own religion, and to become something they were never meant to be. Taking their slave master's names, taking their slave master's religions, and all the shame that came with not knowing who they were. I think this continues today. So as progressive, progressive of a society that we may believe we are, I believe we're very regressive. I think that 400 years later, we are still ashamed to tell our stories. We are still being told that our language is forbidden, that our sex is forbidden, that our experiences don't count. We are constantly being told that our lives don't matter. You see it every single day. The world is seeing it every single day that you don't matter. You don't count. Black man, black woman, you don't matter. I realized one day that I'm living in a generation or with a generation of women especially who have never had a sexual revolution. We're just now having um, another racial revolution in this country which excites me. I love to see black people stand up and speak for themselves. But what I'm not seeing is I'm not seeing women standing up enough and speaking for themselves, telling their experiences, letting the world know that they are here, wanting to lead proof of life. <clears throat> when I think about the black experience, especially in this country, but all over the world, I see it being systematically erased. <clears throat> I see textbooks in schools calling slavery something else. I see them calling slaves migrant workers. We've been seeing this over and over. When I was a child in school, for instance, they told us that Pocahontas fell in love. They romanticized everything. They romanticized the slavery. They want you to forget it, get over it. Why are you still talking about that? And so over time, there's been this, this secretness, this secretive life, this don't put your business in the street. This idea that telling your story is called snitching. There's always a negative connotation to you telling your story, black woman. You must be bitter. You must be broken. You're so hurt. No one ever says you're courageous. No one ever says, thank you for sharing. No one ever says, please tell us some more about what it's like to be a black woman in your country, in your town, in your city, in your state, in your home. Don't tell us about your collegiate experience and all the things that you're learning, and you better not get too smart. Don't tell us about your relationships and the families you're building and, and how tough things are for you. Don't tell us those things. Instead of telling us, why don't you get distracted for a second with things like the Atlanta Housewives? Why don't you get distracted by the gossip blogs for a second? Why don't you focus on that black woman? Why don't you talk about tea and shade all day? 
Talk about that. But don't talk about your experiences, black women, because we don't want to hear it. Because you don't matter. Your life doesn't matter. You don't count. Your children don't count. Your families don't count. Is there even such a thing as black love anyway? Do you guys love each other the way white people love each other? And then you look on television, and up until recently, there was very little black love anyway. And the things that you're watching are showing each other, women that just like you tear each other down, literally tearing each other down, literally dragging each other across the floor. And this is what your example is of being a black woman. They'll let you do that all day long. And then you go online and you start judging each other. You're asking questions like, what are those? You start leaving comments in people's comment sections about what you think and what you feel because obviously what you think and what you feel, every minute of every day matters to everybody all the time and you're not talking about what really, really, really matters. And then you're judging each other. Well, she did this and she did that. And she's a hoe. How many people here have called me a hoe before? Raise your hand, I won't be mad. Who's brave enough to say they have? Thought, a hoe, a slut. Because your opinion of me matters. Instead of asking someone what they've been through, instead of asking someone what their life has been like, instead of looking at someone's life story, you judge them because you are born in a society of judgment. You come from this culture of judgment and shame. And I realize that we live also in a society that is so mean yet so sensitive because you don't want anyone to judge you and your inadequacies and what you feel you're inadequate. You don't want anyone to judge you, but you're judging everybody else so freely. And instead of doing all of that, did you stop to ask the person next to them that you're judging? Did you stop to ask me, what has happened to you? Tell me your story. So when I told my story about being a child of abuse, about getting the blood beat out of my face as a child, being kidnapped and raped from the mall um, at 13 years old, uh, being held at gunpoint, and, and, um, and being homeless two or three times in my life, and I told that story, nothing inside of you said, wow, sister, you made it. And it wasn't easy for you, but thank you for sharing your story, your history. You judged me instead. But what if someone asked you, as they asked me, tell me your story, write it down. Would you be brave enough to do it? Or would you be ashamed to tell the truth about yourself? Because you've been taught your entire life to be ashamed of everything about you. You're too black. You're too ugly, you're too tall, you're too short, you're too skinny, you're too fat, your hair is too nappy, you're not good enough, you've never been good enough, you're too stupid, you're too smart. You're always not enough of one thing, too much of the other, and are you brave enough to sit here in front of the world like I am and tell millions and millions of people who you are, that you are here, leaving proof of life and letting them know that you existed, no matter how difficult that existence may have been? Are you brave enough to be counted? To stand up and be counted as here, to make your experiences matter, to leave them for the rest of the world because your ancestors had their histories expunged. And one day, you're going to be history. You're going to be history one day. And what have you left behind? Your shame? Your judgment? Your comment sections? Because that matters. Your harsh words? All these opinions you have that mean nothing to anybody but yourself? So I wonder, what would happen if you could be this free? How would your life be if you could tell the truth about everything you've ever done? What kind of confidence could you have if you weren't hiding something right now? 
Because all of you have a secret. All of you have something you don't want to tell. Something happened to you. Someone said something to you. Someone did something to you. Something you've done or said to yourself. And you couldn't stand up right now and tell it, could you? Because you're afraid of being judged. Because you're afraid of being outcasted from a society that doesn't even respect you in the first place. You're so busy adhering, adhering to the rules of a society that doesn't even care about you. That weren't built by people like you. Looking at my black faces in here. This society wasn't built for you. Why are you adhering to it? Why are you adhering to social standards? It wasn't built by people like you. It was built on the backs of people like you. But it's not here for you. It's, it's not here for you. Yet you, you stand by its fake puritanical rules and the way things should be, these appearances, the way that you need to look in front of other people so that you can be respected by whom? By the same society that doesn't give a shit about you? That are killing your people? That don't want you to get this education you're getting today? You want to make people happy who want you dead, sick, and in jail? You want to put so much effort into impressing the society that rather see you incarcerated or dead. And you're going to follow their rules instead of making your own. So let me not look a certain way because I don't want to be judged by that. So there's this culture of shame. There's this culture of judgment. And then there's this culture of silence that breeds because of these two cultures, shame and judgment. And all your life, you are going to be silent. You won't tell even the closest people to you when you hurt. You won't tell the people closest to you sometimes when you make these things you like to call mistakes. No, there are none. And you won't talk about your family's deepest, darkest issues, and you won't talk about the nights when you're up alone wanting to kill yourself because you don't even know why you're alive. You won't talk about the pain you feel because you're being judged every day. To somebody somewhere thinks you're not good enough. Trust me. And just as you're... You might turn around and talk about me. Somebody in here is talking about you. Everybody has a hater. So in this society, this culture of silence, you're being told, again, not to put your business in the streets. A lot of us heard that growing up and didn't really know what that meant. And where did that come from? What streets? What business? It's called life. It's called my experience. It's called how I learn, how I grow, how I become who I'm going to be, and it's worth telling. Because someone else is going to go through this. No man is an island. None of us are experiencing anything that someone else isn't. And if you can't teach someone else, or reach out for someone else, and share your experiences with them to help their way be a little easier, what are you here for? Why are you going to go through everything you're going to go through to not share it? Then why are you here? What is your purpose? 